What's up everyone? My name is Ale. Welcome back to My World of Stocks. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Chinese tech stocks, which have been absolutely all over the place recently, crashing one day, skyrocketing the next, and overall, a ton of these stocks are down by gigantic amounts, in many cases, over half their value from their highs. And with all the craziness going on in the world right now, it can be an absolute headache just to track these stocks, let alone actually invest in them, which by the way, I myself own Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu stocks. So in today's video, I'm going to make sense out of this whole situation for you guys. I'll explain why they've been so volatile, why they've been crashing, why they skyrocketed by like 40% in a single day recently, and why there's now some new optimism growing with these stocks out of all of this bearishness. And I'll focus more heavily on Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu specifically because those are the stocks that I actually own myself. But of course, I'll let you know, as always, if I plan to sell, hold, or even buy any more of these stocks. And uh, I'll explain everything that's going on. So it's going to be a fun video. But let's go ahead and just quickly start by pulling up the stock charts and taking a look at all of this volatility. I'll explain what's going on with them, what's going on on a macro level, and we'll just kind of go from there. All right, so taking a look here, let's pull up the KWeb China Internet ETF, which, by the way, Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu are its three biggest holdings. And it also owns JD.com, Bilibili, NetEase, IQ, and other very popular Chinese tech stocks, which makes it a great representation of the wild volatility that we've been seeing. And we can see that over the past week, it fell by 12% on Monday, then climbed 5% on Tuesday, then skyrocketed by over uh, by 40% on Wednesday, before falling again by 8% on Thursday, and then climbing back up again by 8% on Friday, leaving it up almost 30% for the week. That is crazy volatility. And yet despite the huge run-up, if we zoom out a bit, we can see that not only are they negative over the past five years, but they are also down over 70% from their highs. That's a gigantic crash despite this uh, you know, pretty big run up this past week. And it's a very similar situation for the most popular Chinese tech stocks like Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu. Alibaba dropped 11% on Monday, skyrocketed by 37% on Wednesday, fell another 6% on Thursday before climbing back up 8% on Friday, leaving it up about 25% for the week. But if we zoom out, it's still about flat over the past five years and down a monstrous 66% from its highs. Baidu and Tencent have also seen the same type of volatility over the past week, but to save time, I'll just show you the zoomed out charts uh, where we can see that Baidu is also negative over the past five years and is down close to 60% from its highs. Tencent has fared a lot better than the other two over the past five years as they're actually up by about 80% during that time. That's, you know, pretty good. But despite that, the stock is still down by almost half its value from its highs. So still a very significant crash here as well for Tencent. So why the crashes and why the most recent rebound this past week? What are the bears saying? What are the bulls saying? And what am I doing myself? What do I say about it? Well, the initial crashing was coming off of a big surge during the 2020 lockdowns where people were forced to stay home and thus turn to the internet for social media, entertainment, browsing, gaming, and even shopping. All markets that three, these three companies either compete in or just outright dominate. Alibaba has the most e-commerce market share at close to 50% with the next closest competitor in JD.com all the way down to less than 17%, and number, numbers of four, five, and six don't even have more than 2% each, so Alibaba just completely dominates it. Uh, they also control the most cloud market share at 38%, while Tencent and Baidu take the number three and number four spots respectively. Tencent also has the most social media market share in China, while also holding the third most market share in the entire world, only behind Google and Facebook, and they're even ahead of TikTok. Tencent also has the second most mobile messaging users only behind Facebook's WhatsApp and Messenger. They have the most gaming market share at over half the entire market and ahead of popular company NetEase. They generate the most gaming revenue in the entire world, even ahead of Sony with PlayStation, Microsoft with Xbox, and Nintendo with the Switch. And they even have the second most mobile payment market share in China, only behind Alibaba's Alipay. 
Meanwhile, Baidu is just as dominant as the previous two, with the most search engine market share similar to Google, and like Google, they also have a presence in digital advertising at the third most market share only behind you guessed it, Alibaba and Tencent. They were also the first company in China to launch a paid robo-taxi service, and they even have the most artificial intelligence patents in the entire country, with Tencent and Alibaba not too far behind either. Anyway, the point is that these are mammoth dominant companies in the country, so when the Chinese government started cracking down on regulations and also printed a ton of money because of the pandemic, which is leading to inflation of at times double digit percentages, investors started selling out of these stocks that were already really high to begin with. Alibaba seemed to take the worst of it, at least in terms of how heavy the fines were, with one of them being almost $3 billion, which was record breaking. And this was for Alibaba allegedly acting like a monopoly and forming exclusive agreements with certain merchants that barred them from selling their products on rival platforms. In Tencent's case, they also got accused of monopolistic practices, namely their WeChat messaging platform for hurting smaller competitors, while the biggest blows to them came in the gaming market where Chinese state media started comparing video games to addictive drugs. And then the Chinese government went on to summon game companies like Tencent and NetEase to figure out different ways of regulating them, and then proceeded to freeze the approval of new games which investors fear will hurt Tencent's financials going forward. As of this year, the freeze on certain games has caused a mind-blowing 14,000 gaming-related companies and small businesses to shut down. That's pretty crazy. And finally, for Baidu, I feel that the pain from regulators mostly trickled down from what was happening more broadly across the sector, but this resulted in a half a million Chinese yuan fine, which sounds a lot larger than it really is, but that's like less than $80,000, which is not really that much for such a massive company like this. But it's still enough to scare investors into thinking that more pain is on the way, given that Chinese regulators have frequently criticized Baidu for not properly reporting past investment deals, and more recently Reuters reported that Baidu's $3.6 billion acquisition of Joy's live streaming business is not likely to be approved by regulators because of the crackdown. And as if things couldn't get worse, there was a significant downgrade recently on Chinese tech stocks from JP Morgan, who called them uninvestable for the next 6 to 12 months because of US-China tensions, the current regulatory environment in China, and a weak macroeconomy. They even went as far as to double downgrade many of those stocks, including Baidu, which went from a buy rating all the way down to a sell rating and had its price target lowered from $245 a share all the way down to just $90. They did, however, clarify that this is more of a short-term analysis, saying that the stocks are unattractive from a time frame of less than a year, but on a longer three-year horizon, they actually think these stocks could more than double from where they're currently trading since the businesses are so strong and they believe that the fundamentals will eventually outweigh the bearish sentiments over the long term. Going back to the bearish views, though, the whole China-US relationship is something that has really been weighing down heavily on Chinese stocks for a long time now, given the fear that they may one day get delisted from the US stock exchange. This is because Chinese stocks have delisted in the past for various reasons, and the threat of that going forward still remains. For example, the Trump administration banned US investment in several Chinese stocks that they believe to have ties to the Chinese military, including Chinese telecommunications companies like China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom. And the Biden administration seems to hold similar hostility towards Chinese stocks as well, as just a few months ago, the SEC completed the procedures necessary to begin a delisting process of Chinese stocks in what is known as the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act. That is, unless they adhere to new audit requirements and provide more transparency, which by the way, I absolutely agree with myself. Chinese companies have long used VIE structures that not only create shell companies giving us foreign investors very little rights, but they are also notorious for lying about their financials and not providing enough transparency, which is something that Chinese Starbucks clone Luckin Coffee did in 2020 before being forced to delist, which sent the stock crashing as a result. Add to that the conflict going on right now between Russia and Ukraine, and you're left with some very high tensions between the US and China. The US has even alleged that China has been 
in talks with Russia about providing certain aid, but China has denied pretty much all of those claims. With that said, foreign companies that get delisted in the US can actually still list in China, for example, like the Hong Kong exchange, and you could still own stock in them through what is known as an over-the-counter stock. In fact, I believe all three of these companies, Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu, are already listed on the Hong Kong exchange. I believe they're double listed, both in the US and in China. But it really goes without saying that if these stocks were to get delisted from the US, they'd probably take a really big hit because you're gonna have much less access to a wider range of investors. And in fact, these stocks are already crashing just from the fear of that. So you can imagine how big of a hit they'll take if they were to get delisted from the US. So damn, all of this sounds really bad, right? Like, like we've been talking about a ton of bearish viewpoints on these stocks. So why in the world did they skyrocket by like 40% in a single day recently? Well, there's actually some good news that came out on pretty much all of these fronts that we've been talking about. So let's quickly cover that now and then I'll let you know what I'm doing myself. Okay, so here's what happened. Now, Chinese officials basically came out and said that both the regulatory crackdown may end soon and they'll even be working to prevent Chinese stocks from being delisted in the US. Now, this was reported by state media who noted that China's vice premier, basically the top policymaker in China, stated that Beijing will be taking measures to support the economy and stabilize markets. He said that they will be rolling out market-friendly policies to support the economy and will be more cautious about regulations that have been hurting money markets. On top of that, he noted that the US and China have been holding meetings recently to improve audit oversight and prevent Chinese delistings by reaching an official audit supervision agreement as soon as possible. That is really big news and it doesn't even stop there. US President Biden and Chinese President Xi spoke on a two hour video call recently about the Russia-Ukraine situation where apparently Biden told Xi that China could face sanctions if they support Russia. And according to Chinese media, while Xi did not outright take sides on the situation, he did at least express concern over it, saying that it needs to be resolved diplomatically and peacefully as soon as possible. He talked about how the war is causing harm to civilians and is in nobody's best interest to continue, so the US and NATO and Ukraine and Russia need to sit down peacefully and agree to terms that will address everyone's concerns. Of course, China could just be lying here and you know maybe in the future they end up helping Russia, but this is all we really have to go on right now, so everything else is mostly just speculation. I think at this point, all we can really do is just kind of wait and see how everything plays out. In any case, on the part about US putting sanctions on China, Xi also warned Biden that any new sanctions or tariffs would only hurt and cripple the already heavily struggling world economy by further disrupting trade, finance, energy, food, industrial, and supply chains, which is probably true. Now, many analysts praise this new approach from China to help stabilize the economy. Great Hill Capital said that Chinese stocks will, quote, rip this year for the next eight to 12 months after the new policies are put, are put in place, saying that they believe returns will be spectacular, especially for Alibaba. And you also had Credit Suisse upgrade Chinese stocks to overweight, saying that they think Chinese equities offer attractive upside potential with valuations that are still depressed. And so at the end of the day, I think that what we really saw here this past week was a situation where Chinese tech stocks were getting absolutely hammered despite strong fundamentals, and that caused a giant short squeeze as soon as any kind of positive news came out. And moving forward, we're still talking about some of the most dominant companies out there with great valuations, and that are still growing. I mean, Alibaba did over $100 billion in sales last year and are still expected to grow by over 20% this year and close to 15% next year as well, despite all these macro hurdles. And thanks to the struggling stock price, their forward P ratio is less than 10, which is also really cheap for a company like this. And it's less than half of where it was just about a year ago, less than 10, that is so low. And even with the downgrades, they still have an average buy rating from 50 analysts with a current price that is right next to the lowest target with significant upside on the average target and then 
a high that is almost three times larger than where they're trading today. So lots of upside potential there. Now, Tencent is in a very similar situation with over 75 billion in sales last year and is still expected to grow by over 17% this year and another double digit 11% next year as well. The valuation is not quite as low as Alibaba, but it's still dirt cheap in my opinion. You're talking about a trailing P ratio that was over 40 about a year ago and is now just less than 15 and their PEG ratio is about three times lower as well. Baidu is in a little bit of a tougher situation because they've been struggling a bit more financially and are getting hurt by the weaker macro economy and especially the struggling digital advertising market. But even they still did about 20 billion in sales last year and are expected to grow by over 8% this year and then recover to a double digit growth rate next year at over 13% as well. And I actually think they have just as much future potential as the other two, especially in artificial intelligence and autonomous driving and a few other things. And on top of that, they arguably have a cheaper valuation too, at least on a PEG ratio uh, basis, where they are not only less than half the PEG that they were a year ago, but it, it's also at less than one. That is widely considered to be dirt cheap, especially in such a highly valued sector like internet tech stocks. So what does all of this mean? Are these Chinese stocks a buy now? Should we be rushing in? Are all the fears gone? Well, I would actually say no. I think for the average person, Chinese stocks are too risky. And I know that sounds a little crazy because I actually invest in some of them myself, but I just think the average person doesn't have a strong enough stomach for what is going on here. I think the volatility is not going to end anytime soon. If anything, it's gonna ramp up. I think you're gonna see huge swings in both directions. And look, if you're a short-term kind of swing trader, you might actually like that volatility. You might have enough experience to navigate your way through it successfully. But for the average kind of casual investor in the stock market, you're probably not going to be spending enough time keeping track of everything that's going on here to be able to successfully navigate your way through it and to also not panic or get a headache just trying to keep track of everything to the point where you start making some mistakes and possibly lose some money. The only situation where I think people should be owning some of these Chinese stocks where I think the gamble is worth it is if you're the type of investor like I am where you are very, well, I'll just, I'll speak for myself here. I am very worried and very concerned about everything that's going on here. And I think Chinese stocks are very risky. However, I am mostly optimistic about it for the long term, but I have a very long term horizon. So I can stomach the volatility and I can buy in small amounts on dips and add to my position with the idea that over the very long term, and I'm talking five to 10 years out, I expect these stocks to recover and perform well because I just think that it's not in China's best interest to have these disputes with the US, get stocks delisted, have less access to investor capital. And at the end of the day, I think China needs these big companies to be successful just for China as a whole to compete on a global scale. So I see things getting better just because if they were to get worse, I think nobody wins. And especially if we were to go into some kind of catastrophic global war or something like that, I mean, at that point, I just think everything is gonna collapse and I don't think anyone is gonna benefit from that. I think it makes more sense for China to play nice with the US and just keep investors happy and try to improve their economy as best as possible. And in that scenario, when you look at the prices of these giant Chinese tech companies, which I think have amazing businesses, I think the risk is worth it because I feel that over the next five to 10 years, these are stock prices that I would expect to double or maybe even triple from here. And ideally, I would actually love to own these stocks forever and maybe never sell them just because they have such great businesses. But the risk all comes from China because it's such a shady situation that is going on there. And at the end of the day, China is saying some very optimistic and positive things right now, but we need to actually see them put it into practice and actually do it before we can start trusting China. Now, for me personally, I never invest more than 10% of my portfolio into foreign stocks because I don't live there, I don't use their products, so it's too difficult for me to deeply understand their businesses to the point where I would wanna invest heavy in them. So I limit my exposure to less than 10%. That way, if all of these stocks were to go to absolutely zero, 
well, okay, I lose 10% of my portfolio, and that's the worst case scenario. Okay, I lose 10% of my portfolio, less than that, and I move on with my life. But if things get better and these stocks outperform like I think they will, then I can make some very decent profits on this. So for me personally, I think it's worth the gamble, but I'm willing to go through this volatility and I'm also willing to take a loss if I get things wrong, which I get things wrong all the time. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down below. Are you buying any Chinese stocks? Are you investing in any? Or are they just too risky for you? Which I completely understand. If you're the type of person who can't stomach this type of volatility and this much risk, which they are very risky, then you should probably stay away. That's at least just my opinion. Not telling you guys what to do, but just sharing my thoughts. So anyway, thank you for stopping by. If you did enjoy the video, hit the like button, drop your comments down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hope you're all doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.